we noticed a guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. You know, he's, he's crawling. And... Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two, three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? 100%. The world is already aware of what happened on July 13th, 2024, a day that will forever be marked in history books as the moment somebody almost took out a former president in broad daylight at a campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, while many people on the ground tried to alert Secret Service that some weird thug was on top of the building with clear access to take out Donald Trump. That man ended up taking out an innocent bystander. Then two other people rushed to the hospital, critically injured before he was wiped out himself. Coming super close to getting Trump on live television. Instead, reportedly only injuring his ear. What many are wondering the day after is how did this happen? The Secret Service was the leading security for the rally. Their job was to protect Trump who's not just a current presidential candidate, but he's a former president. Questioning how could they even allow a man on top of a building so close like that, then totally ignoring everyone who tried to alert them for at least three to five minutes before any of this happened. I just, a gentleman who was along the fence line, just, I'm just meeting him right now, sir. Um, thank you so much. You're talking to KDKA. Can I have your name and what did you see in here? There's Ben Macer. Um, I was, at the same point that probably the witness you were talking to earlier, I was up at the fence line, um, saw the guy move from roof to roof, talked, told an officer that he was on the roof. Um, the officer come look, and I went back to work, um, heard that there was somebody that could see the person. So I went back to where they were standing, saw the person, went back and told the officer again that if he goes back to that particular spot, he can see the person, figuring that he would go in radio. And when I turned around to go back to where I was is when the gunshots started. And then it was just chaos and we all came running away. And that was that. Was that. So um, let me get this right. So you actually saw the man on top of the roof behind us? Yes. And you're saying people p reported that to law enforcement, saying there is a man on the roof of the building? Yes, there were two, two officers that were actively searching. You could tell they were searching and looking for somebody. And we just tried to help and tell them where the guy was. And they, at some point, somebody obviously found him or the snipers found him. And um, that was the end of his decisions. They didn't get him until after he opened fire. So not only was he allowed to crawl on this building for minutes, but he was allowed to get shots off. And basically he almost got Trump. He missed the shot. Did you get a good look at the guy on the roof? I did not have a good look at him, but um, I just seen him going from one building to another. There was a little gap in between and he went and when I went back to talk to see the people that I heard that could see him, um, seen a quick lip look at him there and then went to the officer to tell the officer. And he just, that was all that I, all that I got. How many gunshots did you hear? I have no idea. It was, at first I didn't know what I heard. And then once it became clear what I heard that it was just getting out of there and um, I helped helped a lady that had a four-year-old kid helped them get out, and that was that was it. We were done, and 
Everybody seem, went home. And <laughs> you seem you're obviously shaken up right now, just talking to me. A little bit. It's not every day that you're that close to anything like that. How far do you think that shooter was from the stage of uh, where the former president was speaking? Probably 200, 250 yards. Just a couple of hundred yards away. And when you had all these people telling them about that man on the building, they didn't try to get Trump out of there. They allowed him to stay on stage for minutes. But the first problem is why do they know about the threat? Why is it that all these people on the ground had to tell them about the threat? There are so many accounts of people saying, oh, we had to tell them that something was happening. Why didn't the Secret Service already know about the man on the building? Or did they? Which law enforcement agencies were tasked with securing this particular route outside of the United States Secret Service? Well, Secret Service always has the lead on, uh, on securing something like this, but then they work very closely. Uh, it's a... It, and, and I hate to use the word routine, but it, it is a fairly routine uh, matter for all of our agencies to work jointly with the Secret Service. Out of all of the law enforcement agencies there, the Secret Service was on top of everybody. And it really depends on the venue, uh, on what information is out there, what, what uh, number of resources are de devoted to it, uh, and, and we work with them to uh, provide whatever is requested by the Secret Service, but they're the lead in that security. Was there anything about this venue that made it particularly difficult to secure? You know, I, I would defer to the Secret Service to answer uh, that. They would have done the initial uh, assessment. Would you have had perhaps a local official, official secure that roof to make sure the roof is clear, make sure nobody's in the building, and then stand guard there so no one comes in after that clearing? So, so we don't know if they did or did not do this. Yes, but they I should have. have they, I would. I would presume you should have a local police presence in that area. Now, could you have put somebody on that rooftop? You could have. The other element is the counter sniper team. So as far as we know, we see a two man team from the Secret Service side. As we were discussing prior before we started speaking, they are looking at everything. They have to cover 360 degrees. So I know a lot of folks are like, how could they not see this? Nah, this is a complete failure. And Secret Service, as lead on this detail, is responsible. Point blank period. They did not do their job. Now the question is, was it sloppiness or laziness? Or was this deliberately done? Because I'm telling you right now, Trump shouldn't trust any of these people. Tim, would you consider this a failure of the security? Well, I'll tell you when President Reagan was shot, that was a failure too, because we didn't use metal detectors at the time. But while we said he, he wasn't killed, he was injured. So yes, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a failure, plain and simple. If a, a protectee is hit, something went wrong, something's gonna have to be changed. So uh, anytime a protectee is harmed, there's something that has to change. You have to uh, critically look at what happened, why it happened. Listen, at the end of the day, the Secret Service failed. If they're the head honchos in charge of the security at the event, out of all the law enforcement agencies, this is on their hands. It happened on their watch. One innocent bystander gone, who was there with his wife and daughters. They saw everything as it unfolded. Two others critically injured. And I saw a lot of people call this a prank or a hoax for sympathy and votes. Like who in the world will set themselves up to be in the head? Then on top of that, Trump is already ahead in the polls. And no, it can't be a prank when you have one victim gone and two others in the hospital. I'm saying though, I don't care who you're voting for. I really don't. However, everybody can clearly see what's going on here. The first time in over 40 years that anything remotely close happened like this. 43 years ago, 1981, Reagan. And if they're leaving a former president vulnerable like that, now I'm wondering if Biden's team is up to par or the other former presidents outside of Trump, Obama, Bush, Clinton, Jimmy Carter. Then you have to think about their families, their adult children that the Secret Service is protecting, their wives. You have Congress members. So I don't know why anyone will be cheering this on or upset that the hitter missed because we will be waking up to a different day in total chaos in this country if that moron was a tad bit closer. Everybody will be in jeopardy. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Let me know what you think about this below. The Secret Service obviously failed here. Do you think it was sloppiness and they just did a bad job? Or do you think they were complicit? Special thank you to all the supporters of the channel, Gary G, Desiree, John H, L Smith, and shout out to a subscriber that's been watching for years with her husband, didn't want her name out there, but much love to you for your generous support for the channel.
Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.